Welcome to David's Ships. In this video, I continue with the construction of the 1 in 350 scale HMS hood model. To watch other videos in this build series, follow the link to the playlist in the cards above. In today's video, I'll make modifications to the deck by removing the smoldered plastic chain and opening up the hawse pipes at the bow and stern of the ship. As for the hawse pipes, these are definitely going to need to be addressed, especially on the deck, because they just have a a flat piece of plastic that's very shallow. It's not going to look right at all because the anchor chain is just going to magically end in the middle of nowhere. It, it, it can't stay like this. So I'm going to need to drill these out and then form an opening with plastic putty. So that's something that I'll do in this video. As for the photo edge gratings, Flyhawk did provide three for the openings on the forecastle deck. So as per these instructions, I'll only be using one of them to cover the aft starboard opening. The other two will be left open. The number of bits that need to be cleaned up. A lot of these hatches have photo etch replacement parts that will be stuck on top of them. And this plastic anchor chain that is molded into the deck is going to be replaced with a actual chain. So it also needs to be removed. Due to the location of some of the details on the deck, this is a little bit tricky, but just being careful and working it down with a file will eventually remove the chain. If I can just get the chain removed in these aft sections, it'll be a lot easier in the forward section because I can easily access it down the length of the chain and I can use a big flat file to just remove it quickly. It's just this little bit here at the end around all the details that's quite difficult to access. This is where I'm going to have to be a bit careful and go slowly. Now that I'm out of that area with all the details sticking out of the deck, I can move on to a more simple filing process. So I'm going to use this flat bar file and then just rapidly work my way down the length of the chain. One gone, one more to do. That actually wasn't that bad. It's a bit rough, but I'll touch it up with some fine sandpaper in a bit. The starboard chain proceeds in much the same way as the port chain. Once again, I just need to be careful around the aft section of the chain where there is details. And then once that section of chain is removed, it's easy to remove the rest of the chain with a bar file. While I have the files out, I'm just going to clean up some of these hatches. The top of these hatches have replacement parts in the Flyhawk detail upgrade kit, so I need to smooth off the top so that they can sit flushly. I have pre-checked to make sure that all of these parts that I am sanding down do in fact have photo edge replacement parts. Fortunately, all of these parts are relatively easy to access from the side of the ship, there isn't really any detail getting in the way of sanding them. Now to open up the horse pipes, these plastic bases need to be removed so I can form a much more realistic shaped horse pipe with plastic putty. To open them up, I start by drilling a hole roughly in the center of them. These holes just need to be big enough for me to get a file into them. Once I can get a file with a curved edge into them, I can use that to open up the hole all the way to that perimeter line. To start off, I'm going to use a circular file, and I work it quite aggressively to get to the perimeter. Once near the desired edge, I lighten the pressure and gently sand towards the correct line. In some of the more harder to reach areas, I use the blade of a hobby knife to cut away the plastic, being very careful to not overcut. Following the work with the blade, I then use the round file again to clean up the edges. I then repeat this process for the other three horse pipe openings. After opening up the horse pipes, I do some touch-up to the central section of decking. There are a few plastic injection sites on this piece that need to be removed and cleaned up. After all the cutting and filing of these parts, I need to clean up their rather rough finish. To do that, I use a 1000 grit sanding sponge. Next, I form the openings for the horse pipes using Tamiya plastic putty. This plastic putty is actually quite old, and it's semi-dried already, which means it's actually quite convenient for this type of work, because I can form it in my hands. If this was a fresh tube of putty, it would be a lot more soft, which would make it a lot more difficult to roll in my fingers. So in this case, using somewhat stale putty is proving to be quite beneficial. After rolling a generous blob, I then place it into position and gently press it down. When set, the putty will become rock hard and properly bonded to the plastic, but while it's still wet, I can form it into the desired shape for the horse pipe. After searching around for an appropriate tool to shape the inside of the horse pipe, I found out that 
the end of a paintbrush is pretty much perfect for this job. It is important when forming the horse pipe that the putty doesn't stick to the end of the paintbrush. So to prevent that from happening, I dip the end of the paintbrush in Tamiya lacquer thinner. Tamiya lacquer thinner will thin Tamiya plastic putty, but it will not harm the plastic that the kit is made out of. After creating the general shape of the horse pipe with the back of the paintbrush, I then use this round file to form the hole at the very aft of the horse pipe. This is the hole through which the anchor chain would slide. This is a bit of an iterative process, so you will need to come back and reshape it and work it until you get it into the form that you are happy with. Fortunately, at any point before it is set, you can re-wet the putty with Tamiya lacquer thinner and reshape it to your desire. Once happy with the shape, I clean up the area once again using Tamiya lacquer thinner and wipe the excess off the deck. And there it is, one horse pipe opening. That is considerably better than the horrible flat piece of plastic that was in there before. And I just need to repeat this process another three times at the bow of the ship, and then it is done. This is where I'm going to end this video. In the next video, I'm going to work on the seam line between the upper and lower sections of the hull. That needs to be fixed and smoothed out so that it looks right. The HMS Hood build series is going to be running for quite a long time. So if you're interested in receiving updates, then please subscribe to the channel. Not only will you be informed when I release a video, but it will also help with the growth of the channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.